what we do at National Epilepsy Coordination Committee is establishing the epilepsy awareness gap and the treatment gap and just trying to get to tell people what epilepsy is all about. Mm. So as you've mentioned, yeah, on Monday, it's going to be the International Epilepsy Day and there's going to be a lot of activities happening. Mm. Uh, uh, in Embo. In Embo, that We're is, going to yeah. cover that. But before that, I want to introduce your friend, Sylvia. Yes. Um, hi, all of oh, please you. Please use your mic. Hello, hello, all of you. My name is uh, Dr. Sylvia Mbugua. I'm a consultant neurologist and I'm based at the Aga Khan um, University Hospital in Nairobi, where we see lots of patients suffering from epilepsy and we carry out their treatment and we manage them. Mm. Thank you for having us on the show. Uh, actually, a fun fact, uh, you two are friends, but you met today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, so I, I'm glad that you're here to give us more information uh, about epilepsy. I'm sure a lot of people have questions back at home. So what you can do is uh, go to white 44 channel or the e-circuit on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Then let us know what you would like us to ask either Sylvia or Frederick. Now let me ask you, Frederick, on Monday we are going to be uh, uh, celebrating it. Can I call it celebrating it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> in Embo. In Embo. Uh, but why is it not as publicized, if I may ask? Well, um, maybe I start by saying epilepsy, first of all, it's a condition that is grouped in other conditions that are called non communicable diseases. Mm. You have cancer in there, you have diabetes in there, and so many others. But all along and in the past you've had epilepsy not been actually given an opportunity or to be highlighted in so many ways. Yeah. And as an activist and in my role of trying to raise awareness in communities, yeah. that could be a possible factor because epilepsy, again, it's one of the conditions that is highly stigmatized mm. and there are so many myths and misconceptions about this condition. About this condition. Yes. Uh, in Kiswahili, like your t-shirt uh, says, yeah. Angaza Kifafa. Angaza Kifafa. Breaking the silence. Breaking like the that. silence. Yeah. yeah. So it is more of saying that it has been there because mm. you dead back even for those that are Christians will tell you at some point Jesus healed somebody who had epilepsy. Exactly. I remember that so, Bible verse yeah, very clearly. Sure. <laughs> and and even from that point, mm. because if you read that verse it says, you know, he the guy was prayed for mm. and the demons for epilepsy, you know, came out of that person. So mm. all along people in other spaces think that epilepsy is a demon possessed you know kind mm. of a condition mm. i come from mombasa and there's a lot of Stigma. you know witchcraft she believes down in mombasa mm. um my passion to actually talk about epilepsy comes from a point where my sister our last born sister she's now 13 years old mm. was diagnosed with epilepsy at the age of two Okay. You know, and as a family, we also didn't know much about epilepsy. There wasn't uh, any do documentation or... No, nothing. Uh. And it wasn't an easy thing to, you know, live with somebody who has a condition you that you no don't... no idea how to handle the situation. Yeah, you don't really know what is all about. Actually, before you continue, there's something we were talking about earlier. Uh, yeah. The specialists mm. in this field, they are epilepsy. There's only like two in the country. <laughs> uh, that's ridiculous though. As in, wha why is that? Um, actually, epilepsy is a part of a group of disorders which are called the neurological disorders, disorders which affect the brain and the spinal cord. So there are actually more than that. We are about 14, 15 neurologists, neurologists. for the entire population of Kenya, which I think is about, but what about 14, epilepsy 15 million. Specialists? So all of us are actually trained to treat epilepsy. Only. All 14 of us, okay. but um, there's you can actually go down and do a subspecialty in epilepsy. Mm. So these are what are called the epileptologists now who just focus on epilepsy alone. But for the, all of us, 14 of us, we can actually treat epilepsy. All, all neurologists. Us, all neurologists are oh. trained. So epilepsy is just one section mm. of part of the neurological disorders. Mm. So they are uh, many But more uh, in terms of uh, treatment, because it's not uh, something that's curable, mm -hmm. you can only treat it. Uh, what would be better, to deal with a specialist or just a neurologist? 
Um, for Kenya right now, the neurologists are very good because we don't have that capacity to say, let's leave them to the epileptologists. And epileptologists are not necessarily neurologists mm. because neuro neurology is a wide spectrum of diseases. Anything to do with the brain and the spinal cord, be it strokes, be it headaches, be it some of these degenerative diseases like um, d the dementias, mm. diseases of forgetfulness, Parkinson's. Mm. So epilepsy is just one section inside neurology. And it uh, has to do with the brain. Yes, it has uh, to do if, with the if brain. You can, uh, just for a minute, uh, if you can let us know what epilepsy is, as in, as in how how does it affect the body? Uh, okay. What does uh, someone go through during yeah. that? Uh, yeah. So it's very important to know this also as we do try to create public awareness yeah. because a lot of people come to us who've suffered from epilepsy for years and they've never really known that that is what they're suffering from oh, and really? they can get help for it. So oh. as um, Fred here said, a lot of people that it's witchcraft. Many of the patients back home up country are hidden at home because it's a disorder that comes with a lot of motor as well as sensory abnormalities. So in a nutshell, epilepsy is a disorder that affects the neurons, meaning to put it simply the nerves of the brain. So we have abnormal firing of the brain new neurons with abnormal electrical activity. So it's very disorganized. For instance, if I want, if I tell you, Michael, walk from point A to B, mm -hmm. a message is sent from your brain in a coordinated fashion that actually goes down to the brain, spinal cord, to the that nerves, tells to and tells you, now coordinate. Today. So there's a synchronized activity from the neurons in the brain to the hand. Michael needs to walk, and he will walk by moving the leg in this fashion. So with epilepsy, you get this abnormal firing of the brain neurons. So the message is totally unsynchronized. Mm. It's totally disorganized. And what happens is that you get abnormalities of both motor, meaning patients can actually fall. They get fitting what is traditionally known as the kifafa now, mm. the jacking of the arms and the legs. Mm. They also get sensory abnormality sensations. Mm. Many of them actually lose awareness. They lose mm. consciousness mm. during the event and they can fit. Some of them bite their tongues, others pass urine on themselves, mm. and they are out. And the total event will last about two to three minutes. That's the ictal phase. Mm. And then after the ictal phase, the patient's going to what we call the post-ictal sleep, where they are out for a brief period of about maybe another five minutes. And then they begin to come around, and the whole episode takes about maybe 15 to 30 minutes for most of the patients where they appear confused, they are disoriented, they don't know what has happened to them during the entire event. So there are many ways of presentation of this epilepsy, which is what we call the semiology. There are some who can begin off with um, having funny sensations in the body. Others maybe find someone is talking to them. They have um, episodes where they have momentary loss of awareness. You're speaking to someone and you realize they are not with you. They sort of become a bit confused. So you need to bear in mind that this could actually be an epileptic fit that is going on. So many people come to us, they've not been told, they've been treated for all manner of things before eventually the diagnosis is clinched. Mm. So if you have any person you know who has that kind of presentation, any slight, symptoms. any slight symptom, you need to take them to a hospital. And what is unfortunate is that at the basic level, which is what actually as medical people we are fighting for, and for those who have a share in the medical fields, the organizations, we are trying to strengthen our medical systems at the grassroots level. Mm. So you find there are not too many people who are trained in making a diagnosis. So you find patients will tell you we've been going to hospital for years and nobody has ever told us that we are suffering from epilepsy. Mm. So many times it's good to go to the bigger hospitals, either the county or the district or the provincial hospitals to get a proper diagnosis. Get a proper diagnosis. Yeah. Because once a diagnosis is made, we have treatment for them. But again, you have to do some investigations because there's some epilepsy that is primary. Mm. Like, um, as he will tell you, familial idiopathic epilepsy, where you will find that someone in the family, family line, had suffered the epilepsy at some point, mm. and they're also genetic involved in prison mm. in epilepsy formation and then we have what are called the secondary epilepsies where now conditions if you've had meningitis you've had intracranial infection they can affect your brain yes they okay. affect your brain and they can actually predispose you to developing epilepsy. epilepsy you can also have patients who've been involved in accidents patients who've had head injury so uh, so if you like even a concussion can cause epilepsy Not really a concussion. Uh injury Traumatic where you injury. probably get a bleed in the brain oh, okay. where you get substantial injury to the brain tissue the parenchyma people who've had strokes mm. have affected areas of the brain where there is they are necessary for propagation of the abnormal seizure activity mm. 
tumors. In fact, many people, the first time they are ever diagnosed to have a tumor, they present to the hospital having had a seizure. When you go in and do a brain image, be it an MRI or a CT, you find there's a tumor sitting in there's there. There's a tumor. That's the first point at which they're diagnosed. So it's very important to get these people diagnosed because you might find curable cases depending on what is causing it, whether it's primary or whether it's secondary. So depending on the, um, the cause of the epilepsy, yes. it can be curable. It can be curable. But if it's uh, something that is... Uh, let's say genetic, yes. I'm a passed down, yeah. then that's when it's just treatable, not yes. curable. Yes. So for the primary um, causes of epilepsy, we have the anti-epileptic drugs, of which now they are readily available in Kenya. Maybe cost is what will be a constraint to many of the patients, but the drugs are available, and they're, they're actually some of the basic drugs which have been used for a very long time, which are even available in our district hospitals and our county hospitals. Mm. And patients, when they are put on this medication, they actually become seizure-free, and they are followed up and they can go back to their lives. Because you find what epilepsy does, it impairs your motor activity, your cognitive ability. Mm. You find children become slow in school, they fall back in their studies, they don't do too well. And also because of the stigma, yes. they yeah. become self-conscious. Yes, and they're also separated, isolated by the rest of their colleagues. Yeah. A lot of people think this is witchcraft or somebody has looked at you badly or there are some mm. demons which are attacking you, mm. which has always happened traditionally. Mm. So once a patient is controlled and is seizure-free, they can go back to their day-to-day -day activities. And what we also want to I highlight is that when you're diagnosed to have a seizure, when you look at the international guidelines, the Americans are much more stricter. You're not supposed to drive for one year from your last seizure. Because mm. can you imagine what would happen if you when get you're a on fit the road when you're you on get the wheel? Fit. Yeah. You're a danger to both yourself and even to the people, the other road users. So you're not supposed Could to drive. Could that be a reason, a another reason? Uh, there are some people, yes, there is stigma. Mm -hmm. But there's some people who don't want to, you know, declare it. Yes. Just in case they might not be able to do such things like yes. drive. That is, is very Are there true. some cases like that? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, um, uh, when, when you talk now about rights mm. for people with epilepsy. epilepsy, there's a lot that comes into, into play. As much as in we are trying to tell people that people with epilepsy on they can do anything that any other person can do but there are things that need to be described in a in a manner that is understood to them mm. i had a case scenario of um, of a person who had epilepsy and because he had been in medication for a long time he was seizure free and he got you know a job to work as a as a you know, PSV driver. Oh. Yeah, and it was unfortunate that one day he got a seizure while driving and having patients and having passengers mm. and he caused an accident. You know, he caused So it's it's just safe to just declare it, it's not just for yourself or everyone else around it's you. It's safe to declare it in, in any field in any field of work actually. Because again, it gives every other person or even the employer an opportunity to understand what mm. actually needs to be taken into place. And, to and I would think uh, most employers these days, they're not, you know, like way back when they can cater to you. They can make sure you're comfortable within the workplace, right? Yeah, there's still, there's still a challenge though. Mm. Because again, last year I dealt with two cases mm. of people with epilepsy who were being laid off work because at some point they had a seizure at work. Really? Yes. And But I had to even go in and even talk to the employer. You know, this person has been seizure-free because they are under medication that's making him to manage the, the condition fix. and manage the frequency of seizures. Mm. If you lay them off by virtue of them having just a day that didn't go so well and so they had a seizure... You know, it's more of telling them go back home and continue having seizure because you'll not have a pay money to, to even buy, buy medication. medication. Then I understood from that point it's only that some of these employers have not had a prior information about what this condition is all about mm. because they were really sorry to have wanted to lay them off work without really understanding what this person was what is going, going on. through. Yeah, yeah, so they got they got the people back to work mm. and they said they would support them. Now, now this uh, activation uh, on Monday in Embo. Yeah. Uh, first of all, 
kwa nini iko hapa Nairobi because okay. i'm sure a lot of people want this information <laughs> yeah sure i know i've just learned a few things and people back at home as well uh -huh. but okay sir on to this <laughs> embo what's going to happen in embo let's okay. say if i come to embo and attend the activation okay so uh, national epilepsy coordination committee have uh, this campaign they call angaza kifafa okay okay which um entails going from county to county and you know spreading the word about epilepsy and what happens is on the day where you have people going to a county first of all because of course of the deficit that daktari has talked about mm. of not having specialists either being having neurologists you can think of 14 of them for the whole country yeah, that's in still and insane yeah and the yeah. few of them that either have specialized in epilepsy so it means then that um a lot of these medical staff in the sub county hospitals in the provincial hospitals needs to be given this information so that at at least they are able to do the right diagnosis for for epilepsy yeah and also prescribe the, the proper right treatment medication that's that's needed mm. so national epilepsy coordination committee with the experts that they have the few neurologists the few epileptologists that they have they will go to a county they will do like a training or a seminar for the medical staff mm. like a one day seminar they will be taught on the basic you know epilepsy facts and the latest medication that is there for epilepsy and how actually one would be able to diagnose epilepsy mm. so when the medical staff is empowered on this other side they can be able to they can be able to, to take it up from there yeah. and then on the other side now of letting the public know about what's happening yeah, what is the epilepsy uh. there's always a road show caravan uh, for the angaza kifafa campaign okay. and would we'll transfer transverse the whole county and talk to people about what is epilepsy and refer them now to the same hospital where the doctors have already been where you've trained given them the proper information yes so that by the time people go there they They're will equipped. not just go there and find nothing but exactly. they will have people who have information to hear them out and to do the proper uh, i like that uh, and yes. let me ask you before yeah. you continue uh are you going to schools because i think especially in schools like yeah. in primary schools that's sure. where the stigma is the most uh -huh. so yes uh, on a personal level again since 2014 because my my sister got help at on 20 at 2013 mm. right here in nairobi the first epilepsy open day that had been organized again by NECC. I came all the way and I was lucky to meet one doctor who again, after seeing the passion of coming all the way, decided to come down to Mombasa to see my sister. That is so nice. Uh, you know, and put her on medication. So mm. six months later when, as a family, we had also seen great changes. My sister was having seizures at a frequency of 20 minutes. Oh. You see, so you can imagine what that would translate to in a day. So it was even affecting her personally. Yeah, it was, it was. And so six months later, the medication had really been able to cut down the frequency of seizures. Mm. And I begin, I began asking myself, I, I mean, how many other people out there are, are really suffering and having facing these the same seizures thing, probably. and they're not able. To. So I began going to schools in my county. Uh, going to Educating churches them and letting uh, them know. yeah and going to chief barazas yeah. you know by this time i'd also done a lot of epilepsy research to just get to understand what is this condition really and when i got touch with the doctor he also shared so many in uh, so much other information you know mm. so yeah there is need actually to do epilepsy awareness in schools yeah. and not only the basic epilepsy you know information but more so the first aid mm. which i think maybe we can just mention a few about uh, about that later uh, yeah yeah later on uh, yeah. thank you guys so much for coming but uh, before you guys go dr sylvia yes. uh, i just want to thank you for everything that you're doing with and for frederick yeah uh, you're a hero 
<laughs> uh, please use your mic. Incidentally, in addition to what he said, yeah. there's also the climb up Mount Longonot, which is scheduled for tomorrow, also organized oh, under yeah. the umbrella of the NCEE. Uh, mm, and yeah. this is actually been organized by Dr. All Dil the way Ranch. to the top? Yes, all yeah, the way yeah. to the top. You'll climb? No, I'm not climbing. Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> My colleague is called Dr. Dil Raj Suki, also from Agatha. He'll Agatan. climb for you. Yes, he'll pictures. climb for me. Yeah. So I'm here today. <laughs> okay. He's doing tomorrow. He's doing yeah, tomorrow. to try and raise funds. Oh. He can put up the um, channels through which if anyone is willing to support the cause support of epilepsy, the cause, they yeah. can actually do so. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. that. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to do something. Uh, Dr. Sylvia, yes. I'm sure that people back at home would want to you know, get some more information mm -hmm. and of course uh, get some more information even in Embu because yeah. I'm sure there are Embu people watching right now, uh, how they can get involved. But first, Dr. Sylvia, uh, what advice can you give someone back at home right now who's probably has a kid, mm -hmm. and them themselves, they just discovered they have epilepsy, like uh, something small to help them manage themselves, and also your contacts. Okay. Um, Fred alluded to what can be done when a patient has just suffered a fit. What you do, make the patient comfortable, move them away from any surfaces or objects that can endanger them. If they were in the kitchen, make sure they are not near any open fires. If they were cooking, any sharp implements, knives, keep them away from tabletops, but don't try and stop the feet. The feet mm. will go through its sequence and it will eventually abort on its own. Just turn them over into what we call the recovery position, which is the left lateral. Lie them on their left with the right leg above the left, cross it over, and don't try and put anything in their mouths. What people have tried to do is put a knife or a blade or put your fingers in the patient's mouth because the mouth seems to be going on continuously. What will happen? You'll injure yourself and the patient can injure themselves. So just let them be, let them lie comfortably. Maybe you can put a pillow under their heads and that's it. If the seizure begins to last more than three to five minutes, you don't need to wait for it. Just take them straight to a hospital because there's a danger of a prolonged seizure, what we call status epilepticus. That one is a danger to the brain. Mm. It could result in reversible or irreversible brain injury. So for prolonged seizures, get them to the hospital. Mm. So once a seizure has gone by, people who are known to suffer from epilepsy on medication, those ones know what to do. They've been advised. So just make sure you don't miss your medication. But for the rest, get to the hospital as soon as you experience your first seizure. And then another important thing as you're raising awareness for epilepsy is what are your triggers? Infections, colds, coughs, poor sleep, very poor sleep hours, extreme stress, whether it's at the workplace, at the home front, social stressors, all those. And especially for women around the premenstrual period, we find that a lot of seizure activity can actually be found to increase around that time. Mm. So if you find any of those things, get to the nearest hospital. And if you find that your nearest hospital doesn't know anything, mm. ask for a referral to the next level of hospital and they will surely know what to do. And of course, because yeah. of uh, all the good work you guys are doing, they will be equipped with the proper information. Yes. Uh, your contacts, please, uh, where someone can reach you to get more advice. Yeah, so they can get me on my email, which is sylvia.mbugwa at aku.edu. We'll share that with Michael. He can actually put it on all the social media mm. sites. Sure. Mm. So, uh, uh, you only have a few minutes. A few minutes. Uh, I, won't, I won't say much. Yeah. I think for those that need more information, they can visit the National Epilepsy Coordination Committee website. Mm. There's a lot of information there. Well, what's the domain? Uh, it's www.epilepsykenya.co.ke. Epilepsykenya.co.ke. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the domain. Uh -huh. You can visit there and get a lot of information from there. Uh, and also on my so, uh, social media pages, Frederick Beucci, I share a lot of. How do you stuff. spell that? First of all. <laughs> <laughs> Beucci. Beucci. It sounds that, Italian, doesn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so Beucci is B E U C H I. It does B sound Italian. Yeah, B E uh, U C H I. Mm. Yeah, Fred Beucci in all my social media platforms. There is a lot of information there. We can always get back to you and share. And of course, the rest of the information of how you can support. I'll be going. T I'll be climbing the Mount Longnut tomorrow with the rest of the other team. Mm. Um, we will also post that information of just how you can send in your donation to help somebody access medication or get the proper diagnosis mm. if they have epilepsy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. We appreciate all the information you've given us. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your. 
uh, can I call it continued service? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> to the people. Yeah. All right. uh, thank you very much. Uh, guys, uh, that was uh, Dr. Sylvia and Frederick Beucci. That's Italian, though. <laughs> That's very Italian. So if you need any more information, uh, you know what to do. That's Y254 channel or the East Circuit on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be back after this. Thank you.